Okay. Welcome to well, uh, ICT Integration Workshop 1. This is your first actual workshop and today we're going to be looking at learning platforms. Uh, for your benefit, we'll actually also be going to be covering the National Professional Standards 3, 4 and 5, roughly. Okay, so we'll go over TPAC first of all. I'll explain the learning platform and give you an example and our main focus will be on Edmodo, which is a free online learning portal, I guess you'd say. Now before I start, I'd like to explain about TPAC. TPAC is about te uh, technological, pedagogical and content knowledge or sometimes curriculum knowledge. It's a model devised quite a number of years ago, back in the 80s, and originally we just thought of our, I guess your content knowledge, which is what most of you have as um, grad to ped, you have extremely good content knowledge and you want to develop your pedagogical knowledge. So basically you may know this stuff, but now you're learning how to teach it. Schulman back in 1986 actually came up with an idea that content and the way the stuff that you know and the way you teach should actually go together as your pedagogical content knowledge which is in this box here. Now since then we actually now think of the technical knowledge as well or the ICT and the ICT does not have to be computers. Using calculator or books is technical knowledge um, or using a practical uh, equipment for a, a music or science. Um, so we actually talk about the technical content knowledge so the way you uh, the, the the skills of the content. So, as I said, um, how to set up a Bunsen burner would be the technical knowledge on science. You don't need to know how to set up a Bunsen burner in music. Equally, technical knowledge and pedagogical knowledge would actually be talking about things of how to teach. Uh, so, example, you might be using a blogging tool or a wiki or something to um, demonstrate your pedagogical content knowledge um, or um, web quests and things like that. Um, the bit that we focus on is you're right in the middle, which is your technical, pedagogical and content knowledge all put together to give a really engaging classroom. And all of this sits in a context. So the way that you would actually use technical, pedagogical and content knowledge in a year 4 class would be quite a lot different to how you would in a year 10, 11 or 12 class. Moving on. So learning platforms. Uh, there is lots of different levels of learning platforms and content management systems, so I'll just explain them. Um, the first one is a content management system, which is basically the ability to publish, edit, modify um, content. This is a bit like an intranet or a shared drive. Most schools will have their own intranet or shared uh, shared drive or a folder or a drive that they can access and where they store everything. Some schools do not have these. and it's basically all stored on the teacher's computer and they just email it to each other. Um, this is basically your electronic filing system. A learning management system is the uh, sorry, it's the admin and documentation and where you're actually tracking how well a student's going. Uh, my uni is an example of a learning management system. Uh, LAMS is another one. I'm just going to go over it. So LAMS is Learner, Assessor and Monitored System. Um, developed by Macquarie University. Um, so a teacher can set up a series of class activities and from the student's point of view they then work through those activities. Um, you can also get this from a Wimba classroom online um, through MyUni. Um, I don't know if many of you, your lecturers are using that but uh, we may have a go using that later on. Um, an example of a learning portal uh, is basically a way of collaborating and sharing ideas and um, it's basically, generally it's limited to walls, posts, microblogging and things like that. So this is an example of Edmodo. If you set one up with your class, your kids call it Try Hard Facebook. Uh, this is Facebook, so you can see it's very, very similar. Uh, as a side note, Teachers of Adelaide is a Facebook page set up originally by um, a fellow teacher of mine called Jamie Hibbert. There's quite a few uh, members and it's a good Facebook group to go on to because it's where all lots and lots of teachers join and chat and everything. So um, it's up to you, but it's good. It's good. There's lots of feedback and help from people from all different schools. Um, but basically, this is a learning portal. It's a way of collaborating and sharing ideas. Um, and it's like an online classroom. The last one is a learning platform. So a learning platform is a way, a place where... Uh, it's an integrated online service that provides teachers, parents, students, um, tools to support their learning. 
and it's like an online school. Sector is a, one example of this. It's a new uh, online learning platform that set, was set up originally about 2008, I think. I've spoken to Chris Marley and Grant Grosser, um, who came and demonstrated it for me. Uh, they come from Perth. So basically, a teacher has um, their timetable here. They, they have each lesson here, and you can go in and add your resources, your tools, videos, whatever you want for each uh, class, lesson by lesson. Uh, and the good thing is, so you've got English here. If this English les lesson is all of a sudden disrupted, you can actually just move it to the next one, and all the other classes get shifted along one. So it's a really interesting way of tracking what you're doing. Um, and basically, it makes it so the, the teacher doesn't have to worry about all the hard stuff. Um, they basically mark their roles, plan their lessons, deliver their content, share their work, give feedback to students all online. The one we use is the RM Learning Platform, um, originally developed in Scotland, and there's currently 5 million users online worldwide. Um, you can see here, this is my login, so that's my, my little avatar there. Um, and you have your your feeds, so I go straight here, and anything that's related to me, a bit like your um, morning notices, comes straight up here. Any assignments students have submitted is here, and I can see them. Um, now I'm just going to go into this one in a bit more detail. I'll come back to that. So this is all spaces in our school, learning spaces, interest spaces. Um, and the good thing is about this is that the, the teachers set up every one of their classes, but students can also set up areas like the chess group or um, something similar. And in the background is your virtual learning environment. So you've got all your resources where you keep all your stuff, like a file, and you've got all your courses. So you can see here under our year 12, we have all of our year 12 subjects ready to go. And in each one of those is your class. Uh, so you can set up your class with all the content, all the assessment plans, your resources, your files, your notes, your links, everything for the year. It may take you a year to set up uh, and, and to be really accurate, professional and you know a really good course. The next year, basically you take that course, roll it over, new students and you're ready to go. So it's a really good way of making your life easier. As I said, the first year is hard, but the second year... You only have to do about 10% of the work, and you can take the stuff that already exists and just update it. Okay, so I'm quite happy with ours. So just to go back to TPAC, um, I'll try and cover this for each um, podcast, but if we relate back now to the how can a learning platform help with these things. So if we look at the technical content, um, and we look at how you deliver your content uh, on a learning platform, so you might have music material that you wish... in for content and you can use the learning platform to keep all that content and deliver it it's what so basically you're using the using it to store and deliver information from the teachers point of view you can actually use the wikis or blogs on the on the learning platform to actually um, uh, as a teaching tool from out from to actually embed everything together I'm just going to give an example uh, on Friday just gone uh, my class, so 9BD, my science class, this is our class page and then here I've got all the different uh, folders with information from the, uh, all their resources and everything. So we're stuck, stuck, currently studying chemistry. Let's do this again. My apologies. Alright, so here's all our notes and everything. Here's their assignments ready to go. Unfortunately our class got caught, cut short. We um, had to go and watch a cyber safety um, drama play, which was very good. I think it was Bamboo Productions or something similar. They were very good, but double lesson science prac gone. Um, somebody's prac. So what we did was, um, I've actually then taken photos of the prac and uploaded them to the learning platform. So the students, um, it was Galvanic Cells prac. The students have all their all their the the they've got the technical knowledge of how to use the prac, use the equipment. They've got the content knowledge uh, available to them as well, and then I'm actually using the um, um, the pedagogical um, technique of sharing all their photos to so that way they can actually complete all their work online at home. So they can actually go and get these uh, all their results and read them straight off the graph. Um, so this is uh, iron and copper, and this is the basically the voltage difference, the potential difference between iron and copper. Um, 
So I'm using this as a tool to really uh, engage the students, um, share the information, um, and deliver it in a way that's interesting for them. Okay, so what I'm going to do just to finish off is we're going to our task playtime today is going to be looking at Edmodo. So Edmodo is a uh, learning portal, I guess you'd call it, for um, set up originally in 2008 in Chicago. What I want you to do is you're going to sign up for free. So I'm going to go through the steps that you would do as a teacher. I am a teacher. Click on here and put in whatever username you wish. Um, if it doesn't, if it already exists, um, so if I try and do this one, it will say, no, it's already taken. Already, I've already got it. Put in, but basically choose a name that's going to be unique to you. So you might have to use uh, uh, Jared123 or whatever. Passwords, whenever you set up a password, can I suggest you use the same password for everything, but change the first letter. So for me, I'd use E for Edmodo, because that's the website, and then my normal password. You may even put a, a number at the end of it, so that way if they, have, they make you change your password, you change it to two or three or four. Um, put in your email. Um, I'd suggest use your uni email, uh, Mr. whatever. Um, all right, Jared Johnson. All right, and click sign up. And I've already signed up, so I'm not going to do that. But when you sign up, you'll get into it with something that looks like this. So, again, as I said, it looks a lot like Facebook. Um, yours won't have a picture, you can do that yourself. But basically, all I've got, the main part of the page, is just this wall where you can post information to. So, say I want to post information, I'd go, um, hello, everyone, work on exercise 3.1, whatever. And I want to send that to the student teacher group. Send. So, that's how. That's how I post. Simple as that. For you guys, what I'd like you to do to start with is join. So under my student teacher group, so I've got quite a few groups here, under student teachers, and you can see here, this is the group code. So it's we, go, we click on join, and then we go, you are not funny XV, which is the code and you click join and that will let you into the group. So from a student's point of view they would have set up their student account and join the group. Students always have to join a group when they start. Um, so basically you've already done the same things of login and set up a group. Now last thing is to create a class. So click on create whatever class you want so we might do maths. You know I'm maths 9 and I go maths and and we go create. No, I read. Whatever. Okay, and it was created a code, and it gives me this code. Now, if I go to Maths One, it tells me the code. So any student that I want to get on here has to put in that code. Once they've logged on, can I suggest you click? Once they've all got on, click lock, because I had I've had lots of other students from other classes try and get on, and because they thought it was cool, and so I had to, basically you can just boot them out. Now. The last thing, if I go to YouTube, grab any whatever, say this is a video I want, all I need to do is copy the address, click on link, paste it in, it will automatically come up with it, and I go attach. And I go TED Talk. The group that I want to send it to is the student teacher group. Go down to student teachers. And you can see it's already embedded there. And you can watch it straight within here. Good thing is, um, students might not be able to watch stuff at school when they go home, they can actually follow up. So you might put a Romeo and Juliet um, video in here or video snip or video thing. Um, they can't watch it at school when they go home, they can revise it for homework. Alright, so close those. Basically, we've covered quite a lot, and you're hearing national professional stands. These are the things that I'd like you to start thinking about for learning platforms.